Hi guys, today we are here at the Lee Kong Chan Natural History Museum in the Kent Ridge campus of National University of Singapore and I thought uh, why not start off with the Lee logging series of mine today right here at the National University of Singapore. So let's see what you got inside the museum. very close to the entrance of the museum right now and if you could just see the signboard behind me you'll notice that this museum is very close or rather adjacent to the University Cultural Center in the campus. So that's like a prime location also adjacent to the NUS museum. So this location basically has got a lot of art and culture and heritage stored in here. It was very recently opened on the 28th of April earlier this year in 2015. So it seems very promising. They've got a lot of natural biodiversity pieces inside. I've heard they've got three dinosaurs. I mean, skeletons, of course. So like really excited to see what's there inside. Uh, they allow the visitors to book their respective slots that they want to visit in. So I booked the 4 p.m. slot for today. Uh, it's going to be a one and a half hour visit from 4 p.m. to 5.30 p.m. Let's go check out what's there inside the museum. This huge piece of artwork is the first thing that we see after entering the museum building. If we look closely, we'll notice that this consists of images of specimens from this museum. In the main entrance hall, there's this wonderful display of all the individuals and organizations that are donated to this museum. If we look carefully, we can see that this display resembles a whale. This was designed keeping in mind the, the biodiversity theme of the museum. An interesting feature of this display is that the size of the name is proportional to the amount of donation given. Now that's interesting, these are taking some cues from the mosaic chart that we put up as visualizations. The most prominent name in this display is that of Lee Foundation. Lee Foundation was founded in 1952 by Lee Kong Chian himself. Yes, this is the same person the museum is named after. He was a very prominent Chinese philanthropist and businessman in the Southeast Asia region. Alright, so this is the first skeleton that we encounter and it's kept right at the entrance of the museum. And I wonder if you guys can guess what this is, but if you just see this right behind me, this is the one of a dolphin. And it was found at the East Coast Park right here in Singapore and uh, this somewhere in July last year in 2014 they found it. and. Uh, they done this wonderful job of preserving it for us to see and as part of reinforcing the fact that uh, there's massive biodiversity here in Singapore. So we're right here at the entrance of the museum. Let's see what we've got inside. It's a pretty dimly lit space. So I wonder if it's gonna, the camera is going to be able to capture quite a lot of stuff. So let's see what we can do. We'll try our best though to show you guys everything that we see here. So what you see right behind me is a glass panel and uh, it's got a few species. Uh, I really don't know what to call but yeah, some biodiversity as they call it. Okay, so got a few pictures and uh, the names and some number below it. But the most important thing and the most striking feature the moment that you enter are the dinosaurs that you see right behind the glass. So this is what you see when you enter the striking, the huge, humongous, the majestic three dinosaurs. So as we walk in, the first exhibit that we see talks about life. So this exhibit starts off by answering this question, when did life appear? I mean, I don't really have so much interest into this, but we'll just pan through and see what else have we got here. We've got this vast display of a lot of text and pictures basically illustrating various things about life so what we see here is a model of the Rafflesia flower and if I'm not wrong this is probably the largest flower in the world that we have 
So what you see right behind me is this whole visual panel and instead of opting to have speakers, they chose to have a little more personalized experience. So we've got this small headphone here which when I pick up and I can listen to what's playing in the background. So what we have right here is a microscope and uh, we've got five samples of what they call a cyanobacteria and they say that it's got some pigments which are blue green in color which help them photosynthesize. So this microscope here allows you to see the various samples and also focus accordingly so that you can see the colors of the pigments inside. And if I can just focus it right and if you guys can see it. Yeah, and I just spoil it. Cool. So let's have a look at the next sample and if I can just move it along. Alright, hopefully I got the right position and then focus it back. Oh, and I can see those whole blue-green patterns. Probably, oh yeah, much more prominent here probably. Yeah, here. So the Titan Arum has the largest unbranched inflorescence, reaching over three meters in height. So if you notice carefully, we don't have any branches coming out of this. It's just strongly rooted. And here we are, the second exhibit. This is where three gigantic dinosaurs are kept and uh, I really, you really have to excuse me for the poor lighting. As a matter of fact, this is probably the best lighting that I could get in this area. At every half an hour interval, they've got a light and sound show. So the skeletons of these three dinosaurs that we see in my background, uh, these three were unearthed from the state of Wyoming in the United States of America and specially shipped to Singapore so that it could be kept in the museum right here. so much that I came all the way up to the next level and what you see right behind me is the dinosaur's face or rather the mouth and it's really close I mean if I could just stretch my hand I can almost touch it but we'll abide by the rules and not touch all of these things So what we got here are replicas of the skulls of various species 
and uh, most of the species that we see here have their origins back in the continent of Africa. Uh, just name a few countries, we've got South Africa, Tanzania, etc. from where they pulled out uh, the species and created their replicas to be kept here. And if I could just pan closer, what we see would be the Homo sapiens. Yeah. So the one in white is the skull of the Homo sapiens. Based on Asian male skull. Now in the museum has either been replicated or it's been preserved through artificial means. They got this interesting uh, exhibit over here where at the center of the museum they're actually grown the actual plants and there were these small viewing windows through which you can see uh, the plants or rather the species and they've got a small description written right below here. So I find this pretty interesting. I think where everything we saw was artificial, for the first time we get to see something real. All right, so I wanted my closing shot to be a majestic one. So I thought we'd take something special. So what we got here as part of our closing shot is the Singaporean tiger. So some more trivia. As a matter of fact, the tigers in Singapore were intentionally hunted to extinction. Being a small island, they're posing a threat to the human inhabitants in the island. So I think it just made sense for them to go ahead and hunt the tigers down. I mean, I really wish I could do it sometime, but I don't think in today's world any government body across the globe would allow it. I mean, we can only hope that we do something to preserve the tiger population in the world. To close my visit to the museum, I checked out the museum shop. It is operated by NUS Coop. So, as expected, we had regular NUS merchandise, which are basically the t-shirts and the mugs, etc. And also, keeping itself aligned with the biodiversity theme of the place, it had plenty of soft toys of various animals. Fascinating for the kids, I must say so. That brings us to the end of the museum visit today. And if you can see it in the background, we've got the wonderful museum structure which they have created. Uh, it's a lovely design, I think. If I could just pan closer, see that they've got this whole unique design which I really don't know how to describe. They've got a lot of plantation on it as well. Looks very distinct and beautiful of course. So it was a wonderful visit today here and uh, FYI for all you NUS students and staff you're privileged to a free entry to this museum once every three months. So if you're here you better make use of it. Thanks a lot for watching this vlog guys. Till next time keep loving.